All right, guys, so it's time for another update video. And as you can see, I have been working on Creeper. In fact, there's a lot of cleaning up I have to do. So, yeah, clean her up a little bit. And then I'll talk about what this is all about. And there you have it, guys. The body has been cleaned. I cleaned the RC itself, but I didn't clean the body. So Creeper's looking better. Setting her up so I can go ahead and start doing upgrades. But anyways, for people who uh, <laughs> didn't see this the first time, check this out. If I plug in her ESC, boom, look at that. Woo! <laughs> yeah, that's definitely not good, guys. Don't do that. <laughs> All right. So now that we got that ESC out of the way, I went ahead and just clipped off the battery connection and threw it away. Because, yeah, guys, there's no hope for that thing. I'm not even going to send it in because... It was modified, so they're not even going to touch it. And what I mean by that is that I had to redo the wires that touched the circuit board because they were ripped. But anyways, this is Demon's old ESC, and as you guys can tell, well, it's not in, like, any visible bad shape. It's just it's stuck in the stupid burnout stage. So I have it hooked up to Creeper. I mean, motor fits and everything. And as soon as I turn it on, you can see that it just starts blinking red. I mean, yeah, it can do steering and everything. Oh, I'm surprised it didn't die yet. But yeah, as you can see, no throttle. The main reason is that the stupid blinking for the red is the whole heat detection mode. So once it gets into that, you can't really do anything. I might actually try something along the lines of hook no I can't do that no uh, never mind had a passing thought but yeah I can't do that but yeah guys that's the whole state of what creeper is this is the only ESC that I have that's extra that I could use for her and yeah it just doesn't work so I definitely do need to get a new ESC for a creeper uh, yeah I have to admit it does kind of suck that I can't get creeper up and running at least for now. It's going to take some time, but once I get that ESC, I'll be able to at least drive her. Everything else on this RC works pretty well. I mean, there's a few things that need to be taken care of, because look at that slop, guys. It should not be doing that. That means the hollow ball is busted. I bet you anything. Let's see. Am I right? Am I right? I'm going to flip you over just to look. Yep, I'm right. See how it moves around in there? Steel hollow balls. Believe me, guys. The minis need those. It's like a required upgrade. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump to shout outs. So this week's channel shout outs go to RC Trin, Roger Chevelle, Moose Clan RC, Ultimate Traxxas Man, and Titanium RC. Guys, if you want a chance at a channel shout out, just ask for one in the comments below. If I choose you, I will give you one. All right, so let's go ahead and do some Q&A. So, first question comes from Schwet RC Racing. What would you rate, would you ever race RC cars? If so, what kind of racing, off-road, oval, on-road, etc.? Also, what class would you race on and why? Whoa. Hmm, racing, 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 racing. I think honestly, out of all the options, I would race SCT or, um, Stadium truck. One of the two. Originally I got into the whole stadium truck thing. That was really cool. And then like over time I just started to like the SCT trucks or SC trucks. Short course trucks. And I don't really care too much for the whole one circle. I would like an actual course. I think that answers everything. But yeah. <laughs> That's what I would do if I would be into racing. Am I ever going to get into racing? Eh, I'll let you guys know if I do. Next one comes from Baja Wong. Hey man, love your videos. What program do you use for editing videos? Oh, the Sony Vegas something. Sony Vegas Movie Editor? I believe that's it. It's one of the old ones. It's really basic. I mean, I only paid like 50 bucks to use it. But it gets the job done. Next one comes from Traxxas RC Racing. How many servos have you been through? A lot. And I need more. <laughs> Honestly, I think the ones that I've gone through the most 
have to be for the e Revo. I know Jester has gone through a couple. That's why I ended up just getting the one that I have now, which is... Oh, I don't even remember. Savox. I don't know how I forgot that, but yeah, Savix over Savox servos are easily the best. Especially for the minis. Ah, Geostealth R1 says six years. Because last year was Demon's birthday. Was it? Has it been six years? Oh my gosh, I think it is. Where is the blue mesh? Where is the blue mesh? Hmm. I remember I took it off because uh, I was moving east. Uh, this. The ESC burnt out like I was just showing you. Or not burnt out, it's just stuck. Wait a second. You know, I might be able to get it out of that mode if I hooked it up through the Traxxas app, because it might update the ESC and boom, or bump it out of it. But I don't have an iPhone 4 anymore, so I'd have to get the Traxxas Bluetooth link system. I have that in Jester. Maybe I can go ahead and do that. Huh. Sorry, guys, I'm just... But yeah, the blue mesh used to be on the wires for the ESC, and I took it off because I put on a new ESC and I just never transferred the blue wire mesh. I'm gonna have to do that. Thank you for reminding me. Next question comes from Real Hobby RC. Have you ever thought about getting a 1 8 buggy? If so, what brand? I have thought about it, but I have no clue what brand. Then RocketPod said he's converting the rally into a backslash. Yes, I would love to do that. I have ton of other things that I need to take care of first, like the ESC for Creeper, amongst tons of other little minor upgrades that I completely just forgot about. You have this many RCs, it's hard to keep them in order. Next question comes from the Three Amigos. How do I donate? You can do that one of two ways. You can contact me at darkecliptocart, rcprojects at hotmail.com, or you can just donate through my Patreon page, which ever is easier to you. But if you contact me through my email, I have to see it and then we'll talk and then we'll set up something where we can work things out. Next question comes from Dark Ego RCs. What do you recommend for the Traxxas slash two-wheel drive to keep it from rollovers? I have the LCG chassis with stock shocks and springs and stock tires. Hmm. Extreme RC said, I think he would say LOL. <laughs> Lower your shock suspension, that's what I think. And then Dark Ego, this is a racer jumping truck, not a speed freak parking lot truck. If I lower the shocks, I would be vomiting out all the time. I was looking for a better shock or spring or oil setup. Uh, the easiest thing you can do is to put a thicker shock spring oil. Yeah, shock spring oil. So what, they're, if you have the stock shocks, you probably have just a Traxxas basic shock oil, which is around 30 weight. You want to go up to around, ooh, I would say 60, 70 weight. That would definitely stiffen up the shocks. So if you're going to do high jumps, it's going to make it a lot harder for the shock to compress, which is going to give you more comfort. But at the same time, when you take hard turns, same thing. The shock spring is not going to compress as easily, and it's going to give you a little bit more of a strength when you turn. If you have too soft of shock springs and too light of oil, then yeah, it's definitely going to compact too much and you're just going to roll around everywhere. The shock springs, you can go ahead and stiffen those up if you want to. It would help. You're probably going to have to since you're going to put thicker oil in there. But yeah, thicker oil would be the best choice right off the bat. Next question comes from Brett Barnhart. What do I do for work? Uh, barback bartender. Next question comes from Kevin Major. What is some of the must-have upgrades for a slash 4x4? Ooh, that's a good question. Let me get grim. All right, so looking on here, RPM bumpers are pretty good. They're not must have. One thing I would definitely say is go with RPM or aluminum steering blocks and caster blocks. Those are always gonna be a good plus. Same thing for the axle carriers. If you want to, you can go ahead and get some steel uh, drive lines, they're not really all that important. Um, one thing a lot of people do complain about is the center drive line to upgrade that. I mean, there's numerous things that, or numerous companies that make it. The one I have in here is from Tech, Techno RC, which is one of the better ones, but it does utilize uh, rubber spacers to keep the center bone in place. 
and if those rubber spacers dry out, crack, and fall apart, then it's just going to bounce around everywhere and cause problems. Another must is definitely tires. Stock tires are terrible. These are terrible. I need to replace these eventually. Looking on here anymore, I would go with RPM uh, body mounts. That is a good upgrade. Uh, definitely a better servo. Like I mentioned earlier, Savox is a way to go. Which one specifically? I don't know. My gosh. It's raining dirt. I need to clean these RCs. <laughs> I guess the other things would just really consist of the basic stuff of RPM A arms and shock towers. If you want to, since uh, body mounts are plastic, you could go with aluminum shock towers. It would be a lot more stable. But yeah, I really don't see anything else that really needs to be upgraded. Sway bar kit, that's definitely a good plus. I have this I have a sway bar kit. It does help, especially with rollovers and everything. They don't have the option for the two-wheel drive. I know that there is a company that makes it because RC Bros 2000 did it for his two-wheel drive. And yeah, go check that out if you're interested in seeing that. It's a pretty cool video because I haven't seen that upgrade on any other two-wheel drive slash. Other than that, yeah. Oh, that's always an automatic. Um, if you just have the normal stock shocks, go ahead and get aluminum shock caps. That goes for every one of the RCs that you ever get. And same with the hex hubs. Always get aluminum wheel hex hubs. Everything else though on this RC is pretty solid. Depending on what you want out of performance wise, it's just what you want to show off with. Whether it's aluminum parts or anything else. Yeah, that's about it that I can like guarantee that you need to get is the aluminum wheel hex hubs and the shock caps caster blocks, steering blocks, and axle carriers. There we go. Next question comes from Bemis Berg. I have a bandit with Traxxas wheelie bar, but whenever I run it, the bottom part of the wheelie bar pops off the chassis. Have you ever had this happen? Yes. In fact, I have. And I'll show you exactly what I'm, I'm pretty sure you're talking about. Another dirty RC. <laughs> but anyways, what I'm pretty sure you're talking about so as you guys can see, these little, I guess you can call wraps that go around the chassis, they can easily pop off from the chassis. They're an extra brace that, in all honesty, isn't built very well. I hate them. I absolutely hate these things. And the only way to counter that is to get the RPM wheelie bar mount. Now, with RPM wheelie bar mount, what it does is that it actually mounts the wheelie bars to the gearbox and it doesn't use those extra slots that hook onto each side of the chassis. But yeah, there you go. You can see how it hooks around the chassis on each side. I hate that design. But with RP and wheelie bar mount, you can see that it doesn't do that. In fact, it looks a lot better. And in my opinion, if you have a wheelie bar, definitely get this thing because it is a way better setup. It doesn't work too well with the Traxxas gearbox, but it does work really well with the RPM gearbox. Next question comes from 40 Riding. Have you thought about an Axial Yeti XL? I have one and it's a great basher. You said you like buggy, so maybe look into a kit. Ooh, I have thought about it before. Another RC. Ugh, that requires money. That's the only thing that sucks, but yes, I actually have thought about it before. Next question comes from the RC Workshop. Is it possible to use a 110 scale Castle ESC and connect with a 18 scale brushless and put it on a Traxxas slash two wheel drive? Using an eight scale brushless motor on a 110 scale ESC. Yes, it is possible. The ESC is not gonna be able to use fully utilize a 1 8 scale brushless motor unless you have a very high-end scale ESC I don't know if Castle has that ability to do that um, I know you can do it the other way around where you can use a 1 8 scale ESC with a 110 scale um, motor but uh, uh, like I said you can do it but it's just not gonna be as good as you think. But yeah, you can do it. Next one comes from Extreme RC Trucks. Did you ever think about buying the Traxxas 118 scale rally car? Uh, I've seen it, but I haven't actually thought about it. It'd be interesting to have one. Maybe. 
One day. <laughs> Next question comes from Victor Dobrinsky. Why did Coyote0976 donate iPhone to you and will you ever sell any of your RC cars besides your minis? Ooh, Coyote just donated it because he had it and he didn't want it anymore and he gave it to me. It's like, wow. So, yeah, he's... <laughs> when you have the money, it's amazing what you can do. But I still have that iPhone today and it's never let me down. So once again, thanks again, Coyote. As for selling any of my RCs, I might consider it depending if I need money or not. I almost came close to selling some of my RCs not too long ago, but I decided not to. But yeah, if the money, if the need for money is high enough, I would. Next question comes from Miguel Hernandez. Hey Dar, talking about rustlers, whatever happened to the 100 mile per hour rustler Deimos? Deimos is just sitting up there right now. How he is set up, he is too much of a pain to drive. He literally has so much acceleration with how the gears are set up and with the system he has. He literally cannot drive straight. I pull the trigger slowly and the diffs, I'm going to have to lock the diffs together because one wheel will always spin faster than the other and he just starts whoo, swerving everywhere. So until I get more parts to actually make him drivable, I... He's just gonna sit up there. But there's other RCs that I kinda wanna work on at the moment more than Deimos, but he is, yes, still on the to-do list. All right, next question comes from Maurice Michaels. How much would you sell Damon for? And how much did you... Next question comes from Maurice Michaels. How much would you sell Demon, and how much did it cost you? Oh my gosh. I bought Demon originally, brand new, for like $200, and I spent well over $1,000 on that RC with modifications and upgrades. So all in all, I'd say about $1,400 Demon has cost me. It's a lot of money, <laughs> now that I think about it. But if I had to sell him, I would choose to sell him around $700, but realistically, I think he would be sold for around $400. And he also asked, I have a rear right wheel that is wobbly on my VXL. And he thought, my guess would be that it has something to do with the wheel hex hub or the wheel itself. It might be the wheel hex hub got rounded out and it's not going to sit on the, the wheel won't sit on there straight. Or it could be that your axle carrier has broken. Yeah, or mainly just the wheel rim is broken. Those would be my guesses. All right, guys, and that is it for this update video. But before I end this, I have to give a shout out to Will and Philip for donating on my Patreon page. Thank you so much, you guys. So far, it's what? $21, $25. So at the end of the month, I'll have $25 to go ahead and buy upgrades. I don't know what I'm going to do for upgrades first, but believe me, $25 may not sound like a lot to a lot of people but to me that is a gold mine to do something and once i finish off all these stupid bills i'll definitely be buying more upgrades myself and i kid you not guys with anything that is donated through the patreon all that money is going to go strictly to these rcs nothing else not going to be one of those people who take money from Patreon and go buy personal things. I don't want to do that. That's the whole reason for this Patreon was to be set up for me to spend things on the RC so I can make videos. But thank you, Will and Phil, again. And guys, if you want to help out, like I said, there's a link in the video description. Or you can just go to Patreon and look up uh, Dark Ecliptic Heart and bam. Anyways, thank you guys. Take care of yourselves, keep our scene, keep having fun, and I will see you guys later.